and two pounds and have a half pound that doesn't get used. So I didn't buy like one pound of the lamb and then half pound of the beef because it's easy. But today I have all lamb, so I'm super excited about that. And let's see if this is going to work. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, looks like it might be starting, so yay. <laughs> all right, so shepherd's pie, easy dish, um, and uh, let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually I have some potatoes that I have all cubed up, uh, and you don't have to cube them to boil them, but I like to cut them into cubes all of about the same size because it makes the boiling faster. And one of the things that I want out of this dish is for it to be a quick, uh, easy weekday meal. So I have some water in this pot over here. I'm then going to add my potatoes here. And we're going to bring this to a boil. And I just realized my mic wasn't plugged in. Good thing I have backup mics. Uh, so we're going to let that boil off to the side while we make, make the meat mixture. So we're going to turn this pan on and we're going to add the lamb to it. And start um, breaking that up and browning it. All right, Wanda, Connie, Sloan, Lorraine, Susan, Terry, Tammy, welcome. So glad to have you today. Hopefully you guys are excited about shepherd's pie. So this is one of my go-tos because it's so quick. I can usually make it in less than 60 minutes. So start the potatoes, get them going. Now we're starting the meat. I should have turned this on earlier because it's going to take a while to get up. Jane, you never received a response via, um, I'm... Uh, I got, bought mine on Amazon and in my blog post with the cream, um, with the, uh, that was the coconut cream pie. If you go to my blog post with the coconut cream pie, there should be a link to it, um, on Amazon. But honestly, my favorite thing to do is still to put in foil with, um, beans. It's, uh, it's super easy. I feel like it holds the shape of the pie better than the purple silicone insert. Like it was a cool idea but my pie still shrank a little bit. Just FYI, Jane. Uh, hi, Elena. I'm so glad that you like my recipes. Yes, what is it, buddy? Okay, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, okay? Because I'm, I'm, I'm filming, okay? I can help you later. Or you can ask somebody else to help you. I know, YouTube's not working very good today. I don't know why, okay? Okay. <laughs> In fact, it looks like YouTube is still not working very well. So fun. All right, so we're going to hope that that gets hot quickly. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to talk about today is the top, the potatoes, the mash for the for the shepherd's pie. <laughs> now that he's talking to me, my brain's a little bit gone. Uh, there's a couple different ways that you can mash potatoes. You can use a potato masher. You can use a hand mixer, you can use like my Bosch, you can use a big mixer, um, or you can use a potato ricer. And I will say, um, I like to buy kitchen equipment that I can, that's multi-purpose, that I can use for a lot of different things. Because why get something that takes up space if it's really only good for one thing? So I never had a potato ricer until um, probably about a year ago. I was uh, doing some research on mashed potatoes. I mean, who doesn't do research on mashed potatoes, right? Uh, and somebody was just talking about how much they prefer mashed potatoes made with the ricer. And I'm like, well, I, you know, I'm a mashed potato connoisseur. This I've got to try. And so I bought one and I will say I adore it. Um, I don't use it for all my mashed potatoes, but I always use it for the mashed potato topping for this dish. Now when I'm using, like when I'm making mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving, I tend to use my mixer just because I'm making so much mashed potatoes. But for something like this where I'm not making, I'm just making this topping and it's not, um, doesn't need to feed 5,000 people, um, I will use the potato ricer. And what it does is as you squeeze the potatoes through the ricer and it breaks down the potatoes and it turns them into these glorious potato flakes. And then as you carefully fold in your butter and your cream, it leaves this uh, fluffy and light potato. And I'm all about texture in my food and so I just love it. So there's my little recommendation and now this is finally warm and we are starting to get some browning on the meat all right so uh marianne welcome 
We have people from Georgia and Pennsylvania and Arkansas and Texas. Uh, it seems like we have all Americans right now today. Usually we get a lot of international audience members as well. So, all right, let's take a look at this. Or not. Come on. Seems like nothing about electronics wants to work for me today. I called my son when I was picking him up from school because we were going to be late for me to come back here and start the live stream. And uh, his phone didn't work. I called him I nine times. And on my side, it was ringing just fine. And on his side, it didn't ring once. So technology is not my friend today. All right, so I'm using my cast iron pan because I like uh, what it does for cooking the meat and for cooking the, the gravy and the veggies that we're gonna be adding to this in a minute. But uh, if you can use any pan. I do recommend non-stick just because we're working with so much meat and grease for this. But uh, if you have a, a, a sterling, a sterling. <laughs> if you have a stainless steel pot or a large pan that you really like, that's just fine. Just make sure it's a nice, big, wide pan. This is a 12 inch cast iron pan. So, man. <laughs> It's one of those things that I have this list of things to do before my life starts. And one of them is like preheat the oven or start boiling the water. Um, and I should have added preheat the pan to it because this is taking a while. I have another cooktop that cooks even faster, but it's really loud. So I try not to use it because it just sounds like this awful fan noise in your mind. Uh, Vada, hi from Michigan. Margaret, hello. Good to see you again. Um, Arizona. Uh, UK, yay, we have someone from the UK watching. Hi, Fiona. It is probably a dish that you know even better than me. <laughs> All right. I'm going to check on our potatoes and see how they are doing. Looks like the water is boiling, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit and turn the timer on. So you can, of course, put whole potatoes and boil whole potatoes. It will just take longer. And then the outside of the potatoes tends to be overcooked versus the inside. So I always like to cube mine when I'm boiling them for mashed potatoes. But it's a personal preference. Uh, especially since we're going to be using potato ricer, you want to make sure that the potatoes are cooked all the way through. You don't want lumpy potatoes uh, for this one. I know some people like lumpy uh, potatoes. I'm personally not a fan. Uh, but some people pr pr prefer having those cooked and then some underdone potatoes when they're making mashed potatoes. Uh, I don't recommend it for this dish, even if that is something that you like. Uh, watching from Orlando, Florida and Greenwood, Indiana and Joplin, Missouri. Another Texas. You love the wooden spatulas. I do too. Uh, I actually get these at Ikea and I love them because they're super cheap. Uh, they're great shape and they're really high quality. They last me a long time, so I highly recommend that. All right. Now this meat is going to continue to cook as we add all the other veggies. So I'm just going to get moving because who wants to sit here watching me cook even longer? So I'm going to talk about the grease that is here. Now there are some dishes where I will leave the grease in the pan and because it just adds flavor to the dish. But because this one is more sensitive, because it's we're going to have, uh, we're going to add liquid and then we're going to cook out the liquid because we don't want you don't want the meat mixture to be too soupy so I am going to take the grease out so I just add a paper towel and let it soak up all the grease and I tilt the pan to get even more and throw in the garbage and then just keep doing that until it's all gone hey bud you ready to come help me Margaret, you like smooth mashed potatoes, no lumps. Uh, yeah, I could not agree more. I cannot, I can't do lumps. But my ex-in-laws, they, they were the lumpy potato fans, and I, I struggled with that. Hello from Fiji. Welcome, welcome. All right, now I'm just going to come over and get the other side. Now, I'm not super paranoid about this. I don't go to, like, a major excess. I just get everything that I can. Uh, with a couple of tries. Make sure that there's not like a major puddle anywhere. And then I'm good to to move on with the recipe. Oh, you're right behind me, bud. That's not really a safe place to be when I'm dealing with hot grease. So now I'm going to add the onions. Okay. And the carrots. And the garlic. Oh, 
Uh, those Oreos, those are for the cheesecake that I'm making. I always have at least three recipes that I'm working on at a time. All right, and then we're just going to stir this up. Now, if you do need any more oil, add a better oil, like an olive oil. Um, so again, you could just leave the grease, but for the end result of this dish, I like to take the grease out and then use olive oil. And we're just going to cook this a little longer until the onions start to become translucent. All right. Okay, there we go. I'm on the other camera. What do you want to do? You going to say hi? Oh, this smells so good. I There's not much I love more than onions and garlic in any dishes. I have a friend who actually hates onions in dishes, and I, I just don't get it. I just can't imagine. Whoa, what was that? Somebody started a new school for wanting to be a little close to mom for a couple days. All right, so this is looking good. All right. Oh. You're right behind me again. Okay, so now we're going to add some of our other ingredients. I'm sorry, did you want me to switch the cameras again? Okay. What's going to make our gravy? And that is some tomato. Okay. The most glorious thing ever. One of the tomato paste companies was making these little two ounce packages. It was wonderful and now I can't find them and it really frustrates me. All right, so I've been practicing, I've been practicing how to say this. Worcest, Worcestershire, Worc Worc Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. I used to say it Wor Worcestershire, which is wrong. It's Worc uh, Worcestershire. I've been practicing all day and I'm still getting it wrong, I'm sure. Worcestershire sauce, right there, we're gonna add that. And then we're going to add some stock or broth. You can add whatever you like. I'm adding uh, beef. Um, and now I'm going to add like a small glug of red wine. Now, if you don't like um, cooking with wines, you don't have to use that. That is optional. It just adds a different level of flavor. Get that going. Break up that. Uh, tomato paste a little bit. All right, and now we're going to add our herbs. I'm going to add some fresh thyme and um, some fresh chopped rosemary. And now we're going to add some salt and pepper. And I just kind of eyeball it. Uh, once the sauce is cooked down, then we can uh, check for flavor and see if we need to add any more salt and pepper. Well, get ready for me to sneeze. No matter how much or little pepper I use, it always makes me sneeze. If I'm allergic to anything in this life, it's pepper. I don't know why. Okay, we're going to give this a stir and we're going to let this sauce boil. And we want this to boil away until it's moist but not wet anymore. So that we're going to cook all of this mixture down, but you still want to get it all stirred in really good because that's what's going to give a nice even coverage of those flavors to the meat from the sauce. So you get it saucy, get it all stirred up so that the flavor is spread throughout everything, and then you boil it down so that it's not runny. Because you don't want a shepherd's pie that's runny and goopy. You want it to hold together really well. So I just keep stirring. Get that flavor dispersed and then let it boil. Get a spoon out and ready to go. And I'm going to check on the potatoes and see how they're doing. So I'm going to get a fork to test those. Oops, oh, there's literally a chair right behind me. That was almost really bad. All right, so our potatoes are perfectly cooked. What you're looking for is when you stick the fork in them, it just breaks apart. 
And so we'll turn that off. And one of my favorite toys is actually this silicone straining um, thing that I found because I don't have to get out my big, huge strainer in case my sink is dirty. Um, you just clip it on to the edge of your bowl, like so. And you just strain it right into the sink. It's awesome. All right, I'm going to leave these potatoes over here for a few minutes. Oh, can you shut the fridge, bud? Let's check on our sauce. Ooh. So we're getting a nice boil now, and you can see the liquid is getting lower and starting to go away. So it should just be another minute or two before that is ready to go. All right. Chips. Chips is what I need. The chips is what you need, huh? Okay, so off to the side, I'm gonna get ready for the mashed potatoes. I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, melt the butter because you want, you don't want to add cold butter or cold cream to your mashed potatoes. That will actually make them, I guess the best word is seize up. So I'm going to melt the butter and I'll actually heat up the cream before I add it um, to the potatoes as well for the best outcome of texture. This is getting so close. I, mean, I cannot help you get chips right now, okay? Because I'm filming, but they're on top of the fridge, and I'll get them for you in just a couple minutes. Uh, where do you find the strainer? I got mine on Amazon. Um, you ready for cooler temperatures here in Texas? I bet. I used to live in Dallas and Houston, so I hear ya. Although, I'm not looking forward to snow, so I don't know why I live here. It's up there in the back. Uh, it was just an easy place to put it, bud. All right. Easy place to put it. So heat up my cream. Just for a couple seconds. And of course my fan ran out of power, so I'm getting steam all in my overhead camera. Lovely. Good for me. the meat mixture out. If I can get my cameras to switch. There we go. And so you can see there's still some liquid left. So we're almost there. It's still just a little too, see that? A little too puddly still for me, but it's really close. You like your mashed potatoes smooth and your son likes them with lumps. Stella, I can't even imagine. I about died the first time I had my mother-in-law's mashed potatoes. So now is a good time to kind of give it a try and see how we're liking the salt and pepper level. Make sure to blow because it's hot. So I'm gonna add a little more salt. I just pour some into my hand. And if you sprinkle from up high, it actually disperses the salt better. So at the end of a dish like this, when you're adding any extra spices into it, you don't want it concentrated in one place, but it's also thick enough that it's not stirring super great. Um, so sprinkling from above is really the best way to go. Add a little bit more pepper, same thing. Stir this back up and taste it again. Stir this and taste it, and then decide if it's good. That's one of the things that I love about cooking, um, is tasting everything as you go. Of course, then by the time dinner rolls around, I'm not as hungry as everybody else. That actually works my advantage, because as a mom of a lot of kids, 
I'm always serving everybody else, so the fact that I'm not starving to death is going to help with that one. All right. That, that is perfect. That is just right. Okay, so the very last thing that we add to this dish is actually going to be some frozen veggies. Now, uh, for this recipe and from the top five recipe, I never add frozen veggies at the beginning. I know some people do. They'll add their frozen veggies when they're adding the other vegetables. But because of how frozen vegetables are, are frozen, I find that if I add them too early, they get mushy. And I don't want that, so I'm gonna add some peas, very classic to this dish. And adding them right here is, they're just gonna heat through really, really quickly. And they're frozen to my bowl. I should run the bowl through some, there we go, water. And then this is pretty classic right here. But because the best part about baking from scratch is that you can personalize it, I'm also going to add some frozen corn, which is not a traditional ingredient, uh, but I do like it. <laughs> oh, I told you I'd sneeze if I had the pepper. Woo. That got me good. All right, so I'm going to stir this in and take everything off the heat to stop the cooking process because it doesn't need to cook anymore. This is good. And because we're going to heat this up in the oven to get the potato edges nice and browned, it's even going to cook a little bit longer. So I don't want to overkick those frozen vegetables. So turn everything off. I'm going to bring a casserole dish over and pour everything into the casserole dish. Whew, heavy. Now you can use a couple smaller casserole dishes. I have a couple little individual small pans that I like to use for fun. Um, but, um, but yeah, it fits into a 9 by 13 really well. And you just want to spread that so it covers all the space. Now, if you use a smaller pan, this will come up higher. Um, I like my ratio of potatoes and meat mixture uh, at this level with a 9 by 13, but feel free to change that. I'm going to put this off to the side. I'm going to take this off to the side. And take this. Oh, way. By the end of the video, there's such a collection of miscellaneous dishes and stuff over on the side. So I'm going to bring a bowl over along with the ricer, and we're going to work on the potatoes now. Get out a spoon as well. Okay, so for the ricer, just open it up, and I'm using the smallest one. A lot of ricers come with multiple hole sizes. This is the smallest one. We're gonna scoop the potatoes right into here. And just close it. Let's actually move over to the side camera so you can see this. This is so much fun. And you just squeeze. Well, oh, so good. And then you just repeat. Scoop in more potatoes. Any of the big ones that fall in there. Oh, so good. And then just keep going until all the potatoes are done. Now, you'll notice as I pull back up, 
there's some potatoes that go around uh, along this rim of the pressure and I just squeeze that against here to get those back inside there. So I don't want them falling into this area. So I just keep filling and squeezing and filling and squeezing. I actually have uh, an electric one that works with my hand blender that I get out and use sometimes. But while it's cool and fun to use, it is not as good as a hand ricer, I found. So again, just shake that back into the mixture and scoop and go on. This is going to take just a couple minutes. So that was a great time um, to ask any questions that you might have. Uh, Maureen asked, what are we making? Shepherd's pie. We've already done the meat mixture with the vegetables and flavoring and gravy, and now I'm doing um, the mash for the top. Oh, hold on. Uh, Pop-up is blocking all of the comments. There we go. Uh, hi, Ashley, you're late but looking good. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Uh, you have a cone-shaped ricer. Ooh, I haven't seen a cone-shaped ricer. That sounds awesome. I should check that out. Oh, <laughs> I filled it too full. It's hard to squeeze when these things get too far, too wide. <laughs> That's the balance of filling it too full, which makes it harder to squeeze, versus um, taking longer, but because it takes more times. And you, what you don't want to do is, as you're squeezing the rice, is you don't want to set it down in here. You don't want to squish all this lovely fluffy rice, that, or rice, all this uh, lovely fluffy potatoes that we just made. So make sure that you're always holding it above. A couple more, and we'll be ready to go. There's something so satisfying about this. Hopefully I'm not the only one that loves doing this. Ooh, this might be the last one. It's always fun when you get to the bottom of the pot so that there's, it's hard to scoop them all up. Okay, little one, half one after this. This is it. Okay. Now I'd always rather have too much potatoes than too little. So I tend to go a little on the over side for judging. I'd rather have a little bit of extra left over than wish I'd had more on top of my dish. Let's wipe this up. So now I'm going to add the melted butter. And the warmed cream. And uh, freshly grated Parmesan. Don't use the packaged stuff. You want to make sure it's uh, something that you've grated um, either rec fairly recently. <laughs> All the processed stuff that you get from the store that's pre-graded um, has like a coating on it. Oops. That I don't, it makes the flavor not as strong. I feel like I have to use three times as much cheese to get the right flavor that I'm looking for. And then you're just going to kind of fold and cut this in together. We're going to add some salt and pepper. Now you don't have to add the pepper if you don't want to. Uh, if you want to keep your mashed potatoes uh, white. But personally I like pepper and I don't mind the little black flecks. It's 
So we're not trying to squish this down, so I'm just trying to kind of cut it in. And basically it's kind of like, I'm kind of folding the butter and the cream into and the cheese and salt and pepper into the potatoes. That's another really good reason to sprinkle that rice from up high because um, we want this to have a nice even coverage. All right, so now we're going to need to taste it. Use a little bit more salt. And a little bit more cream. Oh. <laughs> My microphone cord got wrapped around something. I'm stuck. So I just, uh, I just grate my, I grate one of those big, huge things of Costco Parmesan, um, and I just keep it in a bag. I just keep, grate a whole thing at one time, and then I can use it for Alfredo and everything else that I'm doing. So, um, I, I need to add a little bit more cream. Now, usually I would heat this up. In fact, I will. I was going to say, ah. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm in a hurry, so I'm not going to, but honestly, it's 10 seconds. <laughs> We're going to heat it for 10 seconds. Uh, I'd rather have a better outcome. Plus, this is my dinner tonight. So I wanted to be good. Right. I'm going to add a little bit more cheese. And cut this up just a little bit. It's just a little on the dry side still. So mashed potatoes are one of those things because potatoes are such different sizes that you really have to just play with it, play with the texture. Oops, not 10 minutes. <laughs> um, it's just a little different every time. The butter, the cream, the Parmesan, the salt and pepper. It's hard to really write a recipe and put that into measurements because uh, even the potatoes themselves, even if you weighed your potatoes out, depending on how dry the potato is or how fresh the potato is, it will still take more or less. Um, so always start with kind of a base amount and then add if you need to. Oh, that's looking a lot better, much creamier. I'm gonna add the rest. And then just add more, a little at a time until you're happy with the texture. All right, so now our options are how to put the mashed potatoes on top of our dish. So there's a couple options. The classic, of course, is to just plop it on and spread it out. Um, you want to make sure that if you're going to go that method, that you take, uh, let's say that this is the top. If this is the top and we've pressed our potatoes down into our mixture, you make sure that you take a fork and you break up the top a little bit so that as it cooks, the goldening can be all over the top of this. All these ridges will get nicely uh, golden on the edges and you'll get a nice crisp but still soft. Where if you leave it smooth on the top like this, the whole thing gets like a sheet of brown on top. And one, it's not, it doesn't look as good and it's also just not as appealing. So you want to break it up a little bit. Um, and then if you want to be really fancy, you can do what I'll sometimes do and that is to pipe with a piping tip onto the top. So that's what we're, one final taste. Mm. So good. So that is what I'm going to do now. Now, because this is potatoes and not frosting, obviously, it's not gonna come out perfectly smooth. So don't worry too much about it. So I just got it in my bag and whoop, bring this over and you can squeeze it into lines or do whatever you want. Um, I don't even remember how I did it back on the old blog post. Well, I think I did waves maybe. So. You can just do little waves. Like that. 
You can do shells. You can um, pretty much do whatever you want. I like to use this really large, uh, wide open star tip because oh, come on, come and focus. I actually just really wide one, about an inch big, because that's the thickness that I want my potatoes on top. If you use a smaller one, you'll have less potatoes. And I'm all about, like I said, a nice coverage of uh, of the potatoes and the meat, like nice even amounts. So you could also do like a braid. This is gonna be a little harder though, because the potatoes are so sticky. Like this. So you can really have fun with it. But remember, it's potatoes not frosting, so it is not going to be as smooth or as easy to work with. Like wanting to pick up right there. Like that. So I'm trying to think what else you can do that would be fun to do. Anyway, now remember, everything here, it, I, I'm talking, uh, the meat's already cooked. The potatoes are already cooked. Everything's warm. So the only reason you're sticking it in the oven is just to brown the top. Um, that's it. So you could serve it as is, but that golden brown and then making, getting everything nice and super hot and bubbly because our meat mixture has been sitting over here while we were finishing up the potatoes. So it's not cold. It's still warm. It would still be delicious. But to you, I want to put it in the oven to brown the top, give that a little crisp covering over it, and to just really heat that meat mixture up real good. Do, which one do you like better, the swirls or the braid? Both. You like both? Should I do another swirl right here then? Yeah. I want to do like the pattern of the car mat and make it so it, if you put two of those next to each other, then those clip on. Does it look that like part. a sweater, kind of like a cable knit sweater? <laughs> wearing the sweater because it wants to keep itself warm. Yeah, the meat's wearing the sweater. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> uh, do the Irish use a rice shirt icy bag? No, I'm pretty sure they do not use a piping bag. This is just me being me. Um, you know, as a cake decorator, I tend to make all my food look pretty. It's kind of my thing. Oh, I, I don't know, buddy. You're going to have to go look for it yourself. One to have it. I was not the last one to have it. You were the last one to have it. Didn't you have it in the car? No. It wasn't in the car. I don't know where it would be then, bud. And so one of the reasons that I like doing this is one, it's pretty, and two, it gives it nice ridges for that baking process. But yeah, I mean, just plop and spread. It's not a big deal. Um, this is just, yeah, just me being me. One last little row, and then we will be done. So like I said, this is an under 60 minute dish. Try to squeeze last braid in here. And the final thing that I do is I get a little bit more of this freshly ground Parmesan and just sprinkle it on top. Not a huge amount, just a little bit. And that's it. Put this in the oven and in 20 minutes it will be ready to serve everybody. So uh, that's, that's it. This took, what, 38 minutes and that was even with me talking. So imagine how fast you can go if you're not trying to talk to a bunch of people and answer uh, seven-year-old's questions. Uh, so super easy, last minute dinner uh, that the whole family will love. Really comforting. Now this will feed my family of six for just one meal. I typically make a double batch of it um, so that we can have it another night because as long as I'm putting 38 minutes of work in, I might as well get two dinners out of it, right? Um, personal preference though. And uh, yeah, again, make the mashed potatoes however you like to make mashed potatoes. Put them on top however you like to put them on top. It's not a big deal. And the thing is, personalize your food. 
It's one of the best parts about cooking from scratch. You can add anything that you want to meat. I use thyme and rosemary and salt and pepper. You can use other herbs if you really like them. Um, I add that little bit of frozen corn because I like the color and the flavor of that. You don't have to, right? This is really where you can have a lot of fun with meat mixtures like this. Um, and same thing with the mashed potatoes. If you don't like Parmesan, you can add another cheese to your mashed potatoes, put them on top. So um, yeah, you're just looking to not go too deep. So my meat mixture goes up to about here. And then my potato mixture goes up to about here. A normal 9 by 13 pan will fit them too. This is a super deep one. It's just, it's just pretty. I just like it because it's pretty. Um, and again, I've used little individual containers before. I've used smaller containers before. Um, it's just that fast. It's just that easy. And it's just that delicious. So uh, thanks for watching. I'd love to hear in the comments if there's another recipe that you would like to see on our lives. I will be back next Tuesday at the same time, 4.30 Mountain Time, doing another live stream video. And, uh, and that's it. I'll stay around and answer a couple questions for a minute though, but thanks again for watching. Um, can you make this to the head before baking? You totally can. I would put it together just like I just did and put plastic wrap on top. I'd actually let it cool out for a little bit longer, but put plastic wrap on top um, and stick it in the fridge. And then about 40 minutes before you want to cook it, pull it out, let it come back to room temperature and then uh, bake in the oven. Instead of just 20 minutes though, I might give it a little bit of extra time. But at 20 minute mark, go ahead and check it. And you should see the meat mixture kind of bubbling up around the edges, around where that potato mixture is. And if that's bubbling, you know it's hot, you can go ahead and serve it. Um, so just watch for that. But yes, this is a great one to make ahead of time for sure. Um, have a wonderful evening. Thanks for sharing. You are so welcome, Margaret. Thanks for joining us. It does look delicious. Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate that. Uh, watch your sleeves around the stove. Yes. I tend to not wear such cute stuff when I'm cooking by myself, but I try to look cute for you guys, so thank you for the warning. Uh, good morning from Queensland, Australia. Shepherd's pie. Yes, broke baker. Great guess. Looks appetizing. Perfect for big family dinner. Yes, love the braid. Thank you so much. All right, I think that is all the questions and comments, and I caught up, so I will see you next week. Thank you again for joining me, and have a wonderful week. Um, bye. Oops, I can get everything turned off. And bye. Have a great night. And just in case it's still filming like it was last week, I'm just going to stay here for a minute. Yeah, your friend uh, likes to use a sloppy joe sauce and cheddar cheese. That would be an interesting mixture. Edward. Edward, I'm done filming. If you want to tell everybody, they can come up. You want to get some toast now? I know it's not as pretty now, but I just wanted to use all the potatoes. Oh, I know. I am fine with that. I fully agree with the with the notion of using all the potatoes. Anyway, is there a baked pepper fly down anywhere? Is there what? We didn't pepper fly. Nope. I just made this one. Alright. Can you, um... What happened with the two skates? Did you fix them? Yep. I haven't taken those out yet. All right. Okay. Uh, put that back in the fridge? Yes. And get out the Parmesan container. My assistant used the wrong kind of Parmesan. Um, this one, the baked Parmesan? No, up on the top. Ah. 
sorry, I have bunk tonight. Bumble. They are looking for another person, so they asked if you could come, but I thought you would probably want to work, do homework, and I need somebody to get the kids to bed on time. I want to work, do homework, and get the kids to bed on time. Yeah, so I told them that you couldn't come. Yeah. And it looks like it's still recording on YouTube. Bumble. Lovely. Oh, so this has been going on all the time? Well, hello, everyone. Yep. I don't know how to get it turned or off. YouTube has not liked me today. Uh, can I just, like, turn off the... If I just turn yes. off the camera? Yes, you can. Okay. Just turn off the whole thing at the top. So I don't push the record? Hold 